I'm buying SoFi at a deep discount here in 2024. I'll break down why they're so undervalued at current prices, some lucrative options plays I'll be doing to make outsized returns on this stock and much more. But first, for some important bull cases with SoFi Technologies, they're demonstrating a robust revenue growth trajectory with a 22% year over year increase in Q2 2024, significantly outpacing the FinTech industry's projected CAGR of 17% by 2030. This indicates SoFi's ability to capture market share and leverage industry tailwinds effectively. The company's business model, focusing on being a one-stop shop for financial services, has positioned it well to capitalize on this growth, setting it apart from traditional banks. SoFi's profitability as well is advancing in tandem with its revenue growth, a critical indicator of business scalability. The company's adjusted EBITDA margin increased from 16% to 23% year over year in Q2 2024, showing that the company is not only growing its top line, but also enhancing operational efficiency. This suggests that as revenue continues to grow, the company can achieve greater operating leverage, driving further profitability. SoFi added members at a staggering rate as well, with a 41% year-over-year -year increase in Q2 2024. This rapid expansion is crucial for the company's cross-selling strategy, where a broader customer base allows SoFi to offer multiple services to the same clients, increasing lifetime value. In addition, the company's aggressive diversification of its product mix, moving beyond lending to offer a wider array of financial services, is likely to provide more predictable and recurring revenue streams, further solidifying its business model with a U.S. banking license as well. SoFi differentiates itself by offering a comprehensive suite of digital financial services through its mobile application, bypassing the need for physical branches. This fintech approach not only aligns with the global trends, but also appeals to a tech-savvy customer base seeking convenience. The broader fintech market is projected to grow again at a 17% CAGR through 2030, and SoFi's strong positioning within this space makes it a prime candidate to benefit from this industry-wide expansion. And there's also a new partnership at SoFi. Here's the CEO tweeting out some new details. There are 33 million small businesses across the United States, and many people dream of starting one of their own to achieve financial independence. Sometimes it's hard to know where to start. That's why I'm excited to share that SoFi is launching a business banking and financing options via partnerships to better serve entrepreneurs. Whether you're just getting started or already running your own business, we're here to help you get your money right and help turn dreams into reality. So here's a preview, banking, credit cards, investing, loans, of course, the SoFi app itself, small businesses new here, find small business financing and banking options to grow your business the right way. So Again, this is in essence the SoFi model, providing all these benefits here in one comprehensive suite, which seems to be working thus far. Now there is a bit of a concern with this here, at least with some investors. Here's some more previews of what this looks like. Again, very easy to understand, very easy to sign up. Um, the problem is, why are they doing a partnership rather than uh, doing this in-house? Partnerships are not good. I have relationships with these banks. If I wanted to go with them, I would have. Interesting point there. It's a smart move until rates come down and SoFi can implement their own part of the business themselves. In the meantime, the fees collected will generate extra revenue. So two sides of the coin here. Some people believe it's good for now. Some people believe it's not bullish because they can't do it themselves. I think SoFi has definitely made it clear that they're being more conservative in this uncertain market environment. That's why they're able to have consistent you know, profitability now, uh, and they're taking on very secure and safe loans. Uh, you know, They've said time and time again in their past couple of earnings reports that they're being conservative right now on purpose, and now they haven't said that they're doing a partnership because they're being conservative. That's just us making an inference, but it does make sense. But as a SoFi investor, I do eventually want to see them have that in-house and have some type of differential and some selling point against these other banks that are providing similar business banking and financing options. I think a partnership is fine for now, but I think eventually over time, this is not a long-term decision. Hopefully it's not a long-term decision. Having it in-house and having more benefits for SoFi users is key for their future growth. But as of now, I don't think it's bearish. I think more partnerships are definitely good for the brand and the company. But long term, 
Again, I would wanna see this be in-house. So we know they're growing well, they're gaining members at a fast rate, and they're partnering with a lot of big companies, banks, etc. but what is their intrinsic value right now? I have this calculator here in Excel that gives us a fair value with a margin of safety as well based on their projected earnings per share estimates, which so far have been pretty good. They're beating their estimates, and I only expect these estimates to go up over time. So their current price, as of recording this video on August 9th, 2024, is around $6.62 a share. I want at least a 12% return annually in this stock. Their average five-year expected growth rate is around 16%, you know, the give or take plus or minus a couple percentage points, but that should be what they hit. Double that for the PE ratio and a 50% margin of safety. Right now, these are the EPS estimates over time. Again, these could easily be guided up as we get into a better macro friendly environment as rates come down and as the economy becomes less uncertain but for now here we have 10 cents for this year and up to a dollar 50 for 2028 so that being said the intrinsic value i have right now for sofi is around 30 dollars a share which is pretty insane and with a 50 percent margin of safety if you want to be more conservative 15 bucks a share still well above where we're at right now so uh, again, I mean, the stock seems to be really undervalued. Now, I will admit these are definitely bullish estimates. We are assuming that SoFi will continue to execute, continue to add more members, uh, have their product lines grow, uh, you know, have more partnerships as well. Their tech platform, which is a higher margin, faster growing part of their business. We need that to grow more as well. As long as all of that happens, we're going to hit these numbers and you're going to make a lot of money on the stock now. If you want to be more conservative, let's say by 2028, the growth is a bit slow. We only get to around a dollar in EPS for that year, which is still amazing growth from nine to 10 cents from this year to then, but you know, a lot less than what we're expecting here. The intrinsic value is still 20 bucks a share and with a 50% margin of safety, 10 bucks a share. I mean, really not that bad. Maybe again, 80 cents in 2028. Still a buy, 16 bucks a share and eight bucks a share with a 50% margin of safety. Maybe we go lower than the lowest estimates. 60 cents, 2028, still a buy at 12 bucks a share. Maybe with a 50% margin of safety, it's at around fair value or maybe a bit overvalued. But again, we're going super, super conservative here. If SoFi's business collapses, of course, the stock is gonna not do well. I mean, that's just an obvious point there, but all signs as of now are pointing towards the company executing and doing very well into the future and beating earnings estimates and if they beat these earnings estimates we're easily doing over a dollar maybe much more in 2028 now again as i've said on the channel i try to be as objective as i possibly can and the chart doesn't look that good i mean we seem to be bottoming at around six bucks a share 650 a share we're right around that right now we did break out of this, you know, downward trend here. I have this downward trend line. We started back in December of 2023. We broke out above the 200 day moving average, which is great for short term price action, potentially long term bullish price action as well. But then we broke right back down, broke above and broke down all of our moving averages, the 50 day and the 20 day as well. So right here we're in this weird range where we could go a bit lower it is possible i don't think it's that likely honestly but it is possible and if we come back up here there is heavy resistance at seven bucks a share and seven dollars fifty cents a share huge volume here huge buying but also huge selling a lot of call options probably at this strike price as well which is always a contention point for a stock if we break above though you could see very little volume there's a lot of room to really rock it up in this stock but getting past that 7 to 750 range is i'll admit going to be a bit difficult it's possible but a bit difficult. So a way to amplify your returns with SoFi stock is by buying a leap option. Here's the one I own right now. It's a $7 call, which of course expires in September of 2025. It costs me around $2.17 a share. A contract controls 100 shares of a stock. So times 100, it costs me $217. Now the stock is down a little bit since when I bought it. The stock is trading at 664. And the value of my option is now $1.67 or $167. So I'm down 23% or 100 bucks on my leap option. 
But of course, why do I not really care? Why would I do this to begin with? I believe that by September 2025, SoFi will be above seven bucks a share and also above the premium I paid as well. Because of course the profit, you have to account for your premium, you're paying for the option. So let's go to the whiteboard here and visualize how this would work and what you would do to make a lot of money by specifically buying leap options on SoFi. So let's say you buy normal shares of the company uh, we'll do the same strike price of seven dollars. You wait for it to hit seven bucks and you buy a hundred shares of SoFi at seven dollars a share. That's going to cost you seven hundred dollars. Uh, let's say SoFi gets to ten bucks a share by September. Now, I think SoFi is going to be a lot higher than ten bucks a share, but let's say ten bucks a share. It's entirely possible. You still have a hundred shares. The ending value or your current value at that point in time will be a thousand bucks for your position. Let's say you sell all of your shares, your current profit at that point in time, if you sell or if you don't sell, your current profit would be 300 bucks for your total 100 share position of SoFi. Now on the flip side, I could buy a leap option, the $7 leap, which is a call of course. You're betting on an upward bullish movement for the stock, which expires nine, I think it was 20, 2025. Okay, so that's the leap option there. Let's go down here. It's gonna cost you, of course, um, it costed me a bit more, but right now in the market, $1.66 for the contract, times 100 since a contract controls 100 shares of the underlying stock, it's gonna cost you $166. Now again, let's say SoFi gets to 10 bucks a share by September, 2025. To calculate your profit, it's going to be 10 bucks, which is the current share price, hypothetically, of SoFi in September next year, minus the strike price of the option, which in this case is $7. That's going to be a difference of three bucks. Of course, the contract controls 100 shares. So times 100, the difference is $300. But of course, you subtract what you originally paid for the option, which was 166. Your profit is 134 now, of course, that seems to be a bit low because our profit here is 300 bucks um, and our profit here is 134. So why would you do this? But of course, remember, we only used $166 of capital to get 134 bucks of profit when here we used $700 of capital to get 300 bucks of profit. So if you amplify this here, let's say we do... Let's make this pretty easy here. We'll do, well, I mean, we'll, we'll do the math after. It doesn't really matter. Same option. We'll do, again, it, it costs 166 in the market times 100. It's going to cost us $166. Let's say, hypothetically, we use that same capital for all leap options. So the capital for buying shares is 700 bucks. Uh, let's d divide it by 166. That's gonna be around 4.2 contracts. You can't do 0.2 of anything for contracts, so we'll do four contracts. So we could do four contracts with a little under $700. So 166 times four contracts would cost us $664. So now we're spending $664 up front to control, again, 400 shares. A contract controls 100 shares, four contracts controls 400 shares of the underlying stock. Now for our profit again, in this example, we think SoFi is gonna be, or you know, it, it is at 10 bucks a share in this example, by September next year, to calculate the profit again, the current price of the stock minus the strike price of the option, it's gonna be three bucks again, that's our difference, times not 100 shares now, times 400 shares, we're controlling 400 shares, the difference is now 1,200 hundred dollars so one thousand two hundred dollars of course here minus what we paid so we did pay some money we paid 664 for the four contracts our new profit is now 536 536 dollars now again it costs us here 664 bucks to get 536 dollars when up here 700 bucks to get $300. So as you go up, 
The leap options, of course, you take more risk, but you get outsized profit potential. And again, as long as you're buying the leap option at a price you believe makes sense and you think SoFi by next year is gonna be a couple bucks more than where it's at right now, you're gonna make more and more money. So again, great strategies to do are to do some leap options, to have some shares as well, to minimize your risk, but also maximize your returns as well in a relatively safe way. This isn't a call option that is super out of the money where of course, if you bought SoFi $20 calls, then you can make a ton of money because if SoFi does move that high up, then your option returns will be that much more amplified. You'll make 10X potentially on your option, right? But this year, of course, it's not a big profit difference, but that's why leap options are usually so safe when it's a stock that you believe is undervalued and should go up at least a couple dollars in the next couple of months and years. You have a lot of time for that to happen and also, when that does happen, if it does happen, you get that extra profit as well with less collateral needed up front. So for SoFi in specific, this seems to be a pretty good strategy to use to make a lot of money. So that's it here for this video. Be sure to subscribe for more stock analysis videos like this. Let me know down below if you want me to visualize more options plays, not just on SoFi, but on other stocks as well. Uh, let me know any suggestions you want me to do, any stocks in specific, any specific options plays as well. Let me know down below. But for now, be sure to subscribe for more stock analysis videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.